In this video, we're going to look at one more way of comparing groups and subgroups using cross tabulations. The table we're going to produce is particularly useful when you have two categorical variables with several categories in each. When you cross tabulate such variables, you end up with very large tables that are often quite hard to interpret. We're going to look at using expected counts or expected values to help you interpret tables like these. We'll look at regional differences in self-reported health as an example. So, as usual, go to the Analyze menu, scroll down to Descriptive Statistics, and select Cross Tabs. Press Reset if you have previously conducted any analyses and there are still variables in the row and column boxes. Select Government Office Region from the left-hand column and transfer it to the row box. Then select How is your health and transfer it into the column box. Now press OK. You'll see that SPSS produces quite a large table that is difficult to interpret at first sight. It's hard to work out the overall distribution of reported health between the different geographical areas because there are so many subgroups. It's also made more difficult due to the fact that there are a different number of respondents from each region of the UK. One way to deal with this is to collapse some of the categories and this is something we'll look at in a later video. For now however, let's try replacing the frequencies with percentages and see if this makes things easier. You should know how to do this by now, so we'll get to the cross tabs box in the normal way. Click on cells, deselect observed under counts, and select row under percentages. Press continue, then press OK. The output is slightly easier to interpret because the percentages allow you to make easy comparisons between different size groups. But because there are so many subgroups, it's still quite hard to get an overall picture of what's going on. Let's try another way of looking at the data, using both observed counts and expected counts. So go to the cross tabs dialog box again, click on cells, deselect row under the percentage heading, and select both observed and expected counts. Press continue, and then press OK. Now this actually produces a much bigger table, but as you'll see, it does have some advantages when it comes to interpretation. In each of the table cells, we have both the count and the expected count. The count, or observed count, are simply the number of cases in that subgroup in our data set. So in the cell for the northeast region with very good health, you can see that the count is 18. That means that of the 46 of our respondents who live in the northeast region, 18 reported that their health was very good. The expected count is the number of cases we would expect to see in that cell or subgroup given the overall distribution of the data. This figure is worked out using similar arithmetic to percentages. In fact, the number is made up by a percentage of another percentage of the whole data set. We'll go over how expected counts are calculated in class using a much simpler example. However, you don't need to know how these are calculated in order to use them to help you interpret the data. Look at the data relating to the Northwest. It's in the second row. Focus on the first column of these data for those reporting their health as very good. The count is 51 and the expected count is 60. This means that compared to the other regions and bearing in mind the overall distribution of health, we would actually expect 60 of the respondents from the Northwest to report very good health, but only 51 did. This means that in the Northwest, proportionally fewer respondents reported very good health than would be expected if the distribution of health was equal between the different regions. Looking further down this row, we can also see where this imbalance lies. The number reporting fair, bad, or very bad health is about what we would expect. The expected counts and the observed counts are very similar. 
but the number reporting good health is higher than expected. So the news isn't too bad for the Northwest. If we look at the very good and good categories together, there are roughly the expected number of respondents who report at least good health. There's just disparity between those reporting good health and those reporting very good health. We cover the problems with reporting differences between subjective evaluations of conditions like health elsewhere in the module. Whether it's actually meaningful for people to distinguish between good health and very good health, and whether we can compare different people's reports, is an important issue. In a later video, we'll be using this variable to show how to collapse categories by grouping responses of good or very good and bad and very bad into single categories. So as you can see, with larger tables, it's sometimes useful to use expected counts to help interpret the data. This can be particularly useful when you're interested in particular subgroups, as expected counts allow the easy interpretation of the under or over representation of that subgroup. We can see whether there are fewer, the same as, or more cases than we'd expect in that particular cell of the table. You'll be pleased to know that after four videos, we're now going to move on from cross-tabulation. In the next video, we're going to look at analyses that include one continuous variable and one categorical variable.